Here we are in Scottsdale, Arizona. My name is Sarus Farvar. I am the senior business editor at Ars Technica. I am here in front of Taser headquarters just outside of Phoenix. We are here to learn about body cameras. Uh, Taser, of course, is the largest vendor of body cameras in the United States. And we're here to see how they've gotten to where they are today. It's the fastest growing segment of right. our sales. And people forget that we got into cameras in 2005 putting the accessory called the Taser Cam on those devices. And it worked great only when the Taser was used. So the aha moment was, we've got to get this on the body. That was easier said than done. So in 2009, when we put our very first body camera out there, there was no rapid adoption. It was, uh, that's kind of big brotherish. And then we said, we're going to put your evidence in the cloud. They're like, no way. Digital evidence stays in the property room, barbed wire fence, chain links. This is not something that everybody thinks that a, uh, suddenly a chief whips out his credit card and buys them overnight. And you'll find that police officers are the world's most skeptical buyer in the world. We learned that with Taser. If it's a gadget or a gizmo, if it doesn't work first time, it, gets, it goes in the trunk. A few of the progressive guys did it. Guys like Aberdeen Police Department, one of the first users, Lake Havasu in Arizona. They had that, that aha moment of, hey, this thing works. We went back, redesigned it, came out with about 2012, the Axon Flex. So Cambridge University looked at Rialto PD, Axon Flex cameras, one year of use, $90,000 of equipment, saved them $300,000 in complaints. That was an 88% drop in complaints. That's huge. That gets the attention of any city manager, risk manager, litigation guy, chief. Here's a big one, 59% drop in use of force. No one saw that coming, we didn't either. Ferguson was a wake-up call for America. It was a powder keg. The demand for the body camera is huge. Suddenly, unions are saying, look, we need to protect our officers too. Chiefs see this. City managers are saying, we gotta get these cameras. And you know where that came from? This. But they're coming from kids that start recording once force starts, and they miss the full context of why the officer used force. We need to capture the full point of view from the officer's perspective from the beginning, middle, and end, and that's what we do. This is the Axon body camera. To work it, you simply go on your shift and you turn that on. As we turn that on, it's building up a buffer of 30 seconds of video only. It always erases everything except the last 30 seconds. If you go on duty, it's always recording just the, uh, the video. Now let's say I see a red light runner. I didn't miss that crime because what I do is I simply double tap. Now it begins recording, you hear two little beeps. It grabbed the previous 30 seconds of video only, so it captured that person running the red light. It now walks over to the person, films the person that the, I'm talking to as a police officer, and it record, records our interaction. This person's nice, they've had a long day, I give them a warning, I bid them adieu, I go back to my car, I do a deliberate press and hold for five seconds. You hear that long beep? It's now saved that as an event. That's why we call this the event button. Over time, we'll build up multiple events during the day. And at the end of the shift, we'll take this off. We'll stick into an evidence transfer manager. It will securely upload all the videos, recharge the device. You come back, turn it on, and start your day over the next day. That's the Axon body camera. The Axon Flex looks very, very similar, except it doesn't have the lens there. What we do with the Axon Flex same thing, we go back on duty, we turn it on, it builds up a 30 second buffer of video only, no audio, and I need to mount my camera. This is the DVR, this is where actually the video is stored, this is just the power pack and the event button, and I can mount it to a pair of Oakley glasses, like that, just use the magnet. I have the same magnet that can go to my collar, my lapel, my motorcycle helmet, to a baseball cap, you name it. That's what we call Axon Flex for flexibility. The hardware, while that's the sexy part, everyone wants to see the picture of the camera, what's it look like, how's it go from your glasses to your collar, that's pretty cool. But that's not what the real market opportunity for us is. It's all the other add-ons, the sensors, the turning the cameras on for them automatically, and managing not just their digital data when it comes to Axon camera video, but you're talking about PDFs, audio clips, still photographs. This is the desktop client, so if you didn't want to use the docking station, you could upload directly through here. So we're going to click on the title to view it, and then from here, we can play this video. Um, you could also do a clip, basically find a section that you want, make that clip. So every time this is viewed, when it's played, um, if it's downloaded, even if it was deleted, the audit trail lives on in the systems. And you're going to see who uploaded it, what device it came from, the recording uh, start and end time, 
when we access this file, click, and when we actually click play and we streamed it. Right. And that way there's no, oh, I didn't do that or something like that. The body cam device does not have GPS in it, but what it does is the mobile app that we have, Axon Mobile, um, if you have your device paired to that, it's going to use the GPS of the phone to tag onto the video and sort by and say, hey, where did this occur? And then go to a map of all of your videos. When you get digital evidence, you have to meet CJIS standards. You've got to be able to go from camera to courtroom and show the audit trails. That's what we're doing. You've got to be able to redact that. These, office, these departments can't show the audit trails, they can't do the redaction, they can't share it with the district attorney. We're making it easier for them to access this data. They become more efficient, they save money, they start saving on the unfounded claims, drop their litigation. Big game changer for reducing costs. They're not going to turn these cameras on at risking their life. They're not cameramen. Because if something spontaneously happens, they have to protect themselves first and foremost and protect the public. So we're using technology to turn the cameras on. Memphis, 2,000 cameras. Part of that they bought was a Bluetooth sensor that if you change the, the siren, the light, any light bar activation, it will automatically turn on their cameras within 30 feet. When I see TV shows or I see a TV news story where there's an officer wearing a taser, it gives me chills. It's like, hey, five guys started this company and got those in all the officers you know, throughout the, the United States, 107 countries. Well, now I'm seeing that very same thing play out with the Axon cameras, so I'm seeing more departments take this. We have 3,500 departments that have already taken this on as their equipment. So the value proposition that we're bringing here is technology can solve problems. Good afternoon, sir. How you doing, sir? Pretty good. The reason I'm contacting you is kind of try and show you the point of view that an officer might see when they come and contact an individual during the traffic stop. The officer's main focus is basically, number one, officer safety. So when they're coming up, the camera should be secondary. Uh, when we start our camera, I mean, sometimes things come upon us. Uh, we are trained that uh, if we're unable to start it at that time, we shouldn't be so concerned or so overly focused on, I wonder what I'm catching with my camera. Uh, they just want us to do our job as normal. So it will become eventually muscle memory when they are activating their camera, they will reach to the same spot to go ahead and start and stop a recording. We have the option to tell somebody and if it's, if it's suitable and it may maybe calm them down. If I were to say, sir, just for your protection of mine, I want you to know that I am recording our entire interaction here, but we're not required to. To Taser's credit, they have taken uh, good efforts to make it, try and make it as uh, cop proof or uh, I would say Murphy proof as possible. <laughs> and they know that it's a deliberate action to go ahead and either initiate or terminate a video recording. It does help with the glasses, and that was one of the reasons why our department opted to get them, was for those officers that choose to wear them. Uh, as their head moves, it's hopefully it should be tracking along with their head. The main purpose is for gathering evidence. Uh, when they're responding to a call for service, guarding against false complaints is kind of a, a secondary or benefit that we actually get to its main purpose.